So hi there and welcome to this week's video. My name is Charles and today I've come out into the Buckinghamshire countryside where I'm going to do a little bit of macro photography. Now it's quite a dull and dreary day today so I'm sort of hoping we're going to get some quite dark and moody shots. So hopefully I'm going to be able to pass on some of these tips to you guys. So let's get the camera out, let's go find some compositions and go get some shots. composition set up of these lovely grasses that are growing in this field or the wheat I should say um, so what I'm doing I'm just focusing in on some of the grasses are quite close in the end and just allowing those to soften out and blur out into the background it's going to make a really nice monotone image because we've got all those lovely tones of green now of course we want to make this into a slightly more moody shot so my first tip of the day is to use your histogram to help you get the exposure that you want. The histogram is actually a really powerful tool to make sure that you're getting your exposure right. But in this case, we actually want to underexpose our image ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my histogram because it's just gonna help me find that sweet spot of the exposure that I want to achieve. So let's take a little look on the back of the screen and have a little look at what I'm talking about. So as you can see, our histogram is dead center in the middle and this is ideal if you want to correctly expose your image. But if you wanted to do slightly more moody photography, uh, you're going to want to underexpose this bit. And histogram is just a really good tool to get a visual representation of how over or underexposed your image is going to be. So if I reduce my shutter speed, you can see that the histogram moves to the left. Now this is great because you can see if you're going to be clipping any of those shadows uh, because, it's, because it's not reaching the left edge, you can tell that we're keeping detail in the shadow areas, which is going to be really important when we come to editing our moody images. So, and again, if you wanted to overexpose your image slightly, you can see here that um, I'm overexposing by about one stop, but I'm still not clipping any of those highlights, so we're retaining all of the details in the highlighted areas. So. Let's go ahead and take the shots. I'm going to take one overexposed, just because we're here and I can. And, but we're here to do moody photography, so let's underexpose. I'm going to underexpose this by around one stop, or just under one stop. Two second timer to help reduce any shake, and take the shots. And hopefully we're going to be able to create some, a really nice moody image here. Uh, now quickly, my settings are 1,000th of a second, F4 and ISO 100. So that's that shot in the bag, let's go out and see if we can find another composition. So I've come to this field and it's full of lovely buttercups and I thought that would make a really nice subject but of course I need to get quite that low down for these and just so I can help move around and just try and find the shot that I want I'm going to hand hold my shot but this does mean it's going to be harder to maintain the focus and get a sharp image so my next tip is if you're hand holding try and shoot with a fast shutter speed this will help you maintain a sharper image and help reduce any kind of motion blur when you take the shot. So if you do use a faster shutter speed, I would recommend you compensate by increasing your ISO. So I'm going to take some shots and then in a second I'll come back on camera and just tell you the settings that I used.
And my next tip is don't come out on an empty stomach. There's nothing worse than coming out and photographing for the day without anything in your belly. And the best thing is, a bit of cold leftover pizza from the night before. Can't go wrong. So for my next tip, I want to talk about light, or on a day like this, the absence of. Now up till now, today's been quite a grey and dark and miserable day. This does mean some of the images are going to be pretty flat. So, to combat this, we can use an external light source. Now this has two benefits. One, it lights the subject and it could help increase your shutter speed to help you get a faster shot. And secondly, using the external light source, you could create some separation between your foreground and background, just meaning you can get a darker background and a more brightly lit foreground. Of course, this is all about creative choice. So let's try it out now and see what results we can achieve. So as you can see, I've now got my shot set up on my tripod. Um, I've gone in at a one-to-one, -one, so this is a full macro image, and I've just focused in on some of the dandelion seeds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce some light. Now the good thing about using a video light is I can introduce different tones and hues just to give it a bit of artistic flair. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab my tripod and set this up and then I'll talk you through how I'm going to set my exposure. So as you can see I've now got my shot set up, uh, so what we're going to want to do is reduce this exposure until we can only just see the dandelion head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase my f-stop to about f16. This will also have the bonus of increasing the depth ever so slightly. And then I'm going to reduce my sh shutter speed. Oops, turned the right way. Then I'm going to reduce my shutter speed until I can only just see the, the dandelion heads. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my light. And now we're getting a really nice, interesting effect. Uh, we're getting the, the, the blue lights shining off of the dandelion clock heads. So, as this is a video light, I could quite easily adjust the colour tone. So we could go into a more purple range, through to reds. But um, I would think, let's stick with the, the blue colours. I think that looks really nice and get, almost gave it like a, a nighttime feel. Let's just make sure the light is out of the shot. There we go. Now let's go ahead and take the photograph. So my settings are 1 800th of a second, F16, and we've got it set to ISO 400. When you're going out for macro photography, my next tip would be just slow down a little bit and observe what's happening around you. So for example, I've just been walking through these fields and across this fence there's a lovely patch of nettles and on another day I might just walk straight past this and it's quite unassuming. But if you look closer you can see the bees buzzing around, there's some ladybirds walking across the leaves, so there's most definitely got to be a shot here. So like I said, next tip. Just slow down a little bit and enjoy your surroundings and you're going to be much more likely to see a shot. So my final tip for moody macro photography is colour and adjusting it to create more of an impact into your image. So if we pull our colour slider down on the colour temperature for example we add more blues into the image and I think this creates more of an intense and sombre kind of look and feel to the image. Uh, but we could also adjust the image with our local adjustments. 
So for example, I could adjust the greens, the image to take them more into the blue range. And again, adjust that saturation just to create a more refined kind and powerful image. And finally, if you really do want to add a real sense of drama and power into your image, we can use the color grading tool just to bring even more blues into the image. We're not going for realism here. We're going, to, we're trying to create something with sort of intense drama. So we can adjust the color scheme to create the emotional response we want to achieve. So there we go. So just one final tweak to the balance just to get the overall balance to the image and I think we're about there. So I hope you've enjoyed these tips into getting more moody macro photography. If you did enjoy, I'm giving a big thumbs up, stick a comment below and subscribe to my channel to see more of this kind of content. But anyway, that's enough from me today. Take care and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.